Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub. Uh, I'm back again making another video. Uh, this time it's going to be about this SPI LCD display. Uh, this is a very common Arduino SPI LCD module. And this one utilizes an SPI LCD display uh, with a similar controller to the LCD uh, video I made previously. Uh, but this one also offers a resistive touchscreen controller. Uh, and I'm going to show you today how to use both the LCD display and the resistive touchscreen controller of this LCD. Um, so let's give it a start. Let's open Cubamix and set up our project. And I'll walk you through the pinout and the wiring of this LCD. Uh, and in Cubamix, we click on your project. And we need to select our board. Uh, I know many of you might be using the discovery board, but at this demo, I'm going to be using the Nucleo. Um, so mine is a Nucleo 64. Uh, the F4 board and it's the F401RE, this particular one. Uh, and on here, first thing I'll do is I'm going to clear all the pinouts and I'm going to set them up from scratch again. Um, so the first thing we need to do uh, for the wiring of the LCD display is the power line. So we need to connect VCC to 3.3 volt, um, ground to ground, and this LED pin to 3.3 volt as well. Uh, and these are about the uh, power connections. And now for the pins, uh, I'll first enable an SPI line for the LCD communication. And for that, I'll use SPI1. So go to SPI1 and enable the full duplex master board. And this enable PA5, 6, and 7 for the SPI communication. So you need to connect the clock to the um, LCD um, clock and the Mozi to this pin and the Mizu to this SDO pin on the LCD. Uh, these are quite obvious. And now we need to enable digital pins for the LCD. We need to enable a chip select line for the SPI control. So, and for that, I'm going to set this on PB6. Um, so th set this as digital output, and I'm gonna label it as LCD chip select. Uh, and then we need to enable a data command uh, digital output as well for the LCD and I'm gonna put this on PC7 uh, because my LCD is already wired to those pins but you can use any pins and any STM board really um, as long as you follow all of these instructions I'm gonna give you um, correctly so PC7 for data command uh, say digital output pin and I'm gonna label it as LCD um, data command and we also need to enable a pin for the reset uh, a reset pin um, and I'm going to put this on PA9 um, so PA9 is this one as a digital output 2 and I'm going to label it as LCD RST stand for reset uh, and that's all about the LCD uh, pins so we connected all of the LCD pins make sure you correct them to the right pin on the STM and now we need to enable another SPI, SPI line for the resistive touch controller um, and for that, I'm going to enable, I'm going to simply enable SPI2 and this got mapped out to BC2 and BC3 for Mizu and Muzi and BB10 for the clock. So make sure you, correct, you connect those correctly. Um, for this, let me just um, get you closer because it can be tricky. So the clock is obviously connected to the touchscreen clock and the Mizu master input and slave output needs to be connected to the touchscreen data output pin. In fact, let me label it. So TDA, T data output goes to the um, master input slave output, the MISO. So I'm going to write TS um, data output. And the MUSI is the other pin, the T data in, um, this specific one on the LCD. And we need to enable a chip select line for the touchscreen as well. And I'm going to put this on uh, PB5 adjacent to the LCD uh, chip select. Uh, this is a digital output pin, and I'm going to label it as touchscreen chip select. Um, and that's everything we need from the pinout. Uh, one more thing I'll do is I'm going to enable UART line for debugging. Um, I like to do this uh, for me to bring stuff to the serial monitor, but I might not necessarily use it, use this, use this in this demo, but I'll enable it anyway. Um, I'm going to enable UR2 in a synchronous mode, and this got mapped out to BA2 and BA3. But if you don't want to use it, don't worry, it's not important. It's not an essential part, it's just a um, 
um, an addition. Uh, okay, we're done with the pinout. Now let's go to the clock configuration. We're gonna leave things as default. Maximum clock speed with the external, um, with the internal oscillator, sorry. Now we go to the configuration. I'll leave this PI1 to the maximum speed it can possibly bear uh, because I want my LCD to, uh, to update uh, quickly. Uh, but you will notice that speed will drop down because this PI is a serial interface. Uh, as opposed to the previous LCD video I made, which uses a parallel interface much faster. Um, so SPI2 is the one for the touchscreen. I'm going to slow it down a little bit because the resistive touchscreen controller board uh, or IC cannot communicate uh, very fast on SPI. So 64, uh, 64 board rate prescaler is, um, is reasonable. And I'll leave you R2 as default and I'll, uh, I'm ready to generate the project. So click on generate source code icon, um, give the project a name and select the right location. I'm going to call it uh, ILI9341 LCD uh, tutorial. Um, well, I'll, I'll call it SPI tutorial rather. Uh, select the right IDE. Mine is MDK Arm V5, but you could be using other uh, you could be using other IDEs too. It uh, doesn't make a difference really. And um, click OK. Uh, and while this is loading, uh, for any of my business contacts, you can contact me directly through my own company's website, mutexembedded.com. All right. All right. Once the source code is generated, click on Open Project, and this will take you to your IDE. And on Keel, the first thing we'll do is that we're first going to compile the project to make sure everything is OK. So I'm going to application user open the main and I'll let it compile. Um, and while this is compiling, we need to add the library folders to uh, our project location. So we need two libraries, uh, a library for the SPI LCD and another library for the touchscreen controller. So I'm going to share with you two libraries for this video. So you need to copy the C and H file. Um, from down in the description, I'll pass you a link. You need to copy them to your project location. In uh, this case, I stored it the, at this location and I called it LCD SPI Tutorials. So navigate to your project folder and open the MDK ARM folder and put the library files in here. And now we need to go to uh, Keel and add the uh, libraries to the project. So this is compiled fine without any errors. Uh, now right click on application users and add existing files. And we're going to add these to SPI LCD and touchscreen uh, libraries. Um, and we also need to add the path for those libraries. So go to options for target and uh, this tab C and C++ and click on include path. Now add a new path and this button. And we need to navigate to our project's MDK ARM folder. And that's where the library's H files are stored in. And click OK. And this would include the library C and H file to our Keel project. Now let's add the uh, library header files to our main so that we can use them. So let me open the library C files. So I'll first add the LCD, the SPI LCD library. Uh, feel free to have read through it and modify it if you want. Um, this is a very basic, very similar to the one I shared previously with the parallel interface. Exactly the same functions, but this time we are using um, SPI interface instead of the uh, flexible static memory controller. Okay, so we need to copy the library H file include to our main. And we also need to do the same for the touchscreen controller. Uh, and now one more thing that we need to check before we carry on is that may go to the uh, LCD library H file and verify that the STM header file is the correct one. And since I'm using an F4 board, this is the correct one. But if you're using a different board, like an F1 or a F3 or an F7 board, you can always just copy the STM header from your main, your, from your automatically generated main to the library um, H file. Uh, this is the LCD H file, and we need to do the same for the touchscreen header file too. So open header file, and we need to change this to whatever one we have on the main. Okay, okay. So having added the libraries to the main, now we can use them. So I'm going to navigate to the LCD, um, and then initialize the LCD and print something. So 
uh, first function we need to call is the LCD initialize. And this takes few parameters. So I'm going to call it in bigger number two. Uh, the first parameter this function takes is the SPI handle. Um, so just for us to tell it which SPI we're we using to communicate with the LCD. And in this case, we're using SPI1. So just passing the handle that is defined by Cubamix at the top. Um, and a pointer to that, to this function. And the second parameter is the um, chip select port 10 pin. And so because I labeled them, I can use the label I gave it in um, Cubamix. So I gave it a label LCD chip select. And you can see it defined two, two things. It defined the port and the pin for me. First parameter is the port and the second parameter is the pin. Uh, very convenient. And then the next parameter is the um, is the data command port and pin. So a very similar thing to what we did. So LCD data command port and LCD data command pin. Um, just, a note, just a note here, if you haven't gave anything a label in Cubamix, uh, you, something like this, if you didn't give it a label, you're not going to see uh, things I uh, can see here. Um, in your case, you would do it manually with the pin number and the port um, alphabet. All right, and now the next parameter is the reset port and pin. All right, so similarly, so RST port and LCD RST pin. And that's it. This will initialize the LCD display. Um, and next thing I'll do is I'm going to set the LCD orientation, um, perhaps to landscape. So set rotation. Um, and I'm going to pass two. So one is for portrait, two for landscape, three for inverted portrait, and four is inverted landscape. All right. And now I'm going to uh, fill the screen perhaps with a color. Uh, so fill it with, let's say, dark blue or navy. So this takes a color. And there are a list of colors here in the, um, I guess, H file, I guess. Yeah, so these are these are list of colors you can use using the navy, the dark blue one. So let me compile, uh, connect my STM and LCD display to the STM. I'll just wait for the project to finish compiling and then we're going to go ahead and load it to the board. OK, great. Finished compiling without any errors. Now let's load it to the board and we're going to have a look at the LCD display. All right, perfect. LCD did work and I can see uh, my navy color fill. But as you may have noticed, speed is very slow. I was very expected from SPI interface. Um, but this is a very basic LCD display driver um, for you for educational purposes. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to use this for commercial applications without adding SPI DMA to it or um, uh, just some mechani mechanisms to make it a little bit faster and more responsive. But anyways, uh, we have initialized the LCD and it did work. Now let's initialize the touchscreen controller and uh, calibrate the resistive touchscreen. So open the library header file for the touchscreen controller. The first function we need to call is uh, the initialize or the begin function. Uh, this function takes the first parameter it takes is the SPI handle the uh, touchscreen SPI and that's SPI2 and then it takes the chip select port and pin for the touchscreen and I'll label it touchscreen CS uh, support and touchscreen CS pin and that's it this will initialize and begin the touchscreen controller and now we need to call the calibrate function to calibrate the uh, resistive touch panel it will ask you to press uh, some corners of the LCD in order to calibrate. So let's do this. And then once this is done, I'm going to fill it again with the um, navy color I had. So let's compile it, load it to the board, and we're going to have a look at the LCD uh, to implement the calibration. All right, superb. We just calibrated our resistive touchscreen. Uh, it's very simple really, you just need to uh, press on the corners and it will automatically uh, calibrate itself. Um, okay, now once done with the calibration, let's implement a very simple program to read the X and Y coordinates of the touchscreen and um, and just uh, draw on the LCD. So first function we need to call, in order to get the touch data, we need to call get touch data function. 
and this returns a uh, type diff structure. So of certain type, I'm going to put it in the while loop, the infinite while loop, and this function returns a um, structure type diff. So I need to define it as a variable in my main, and I'm going to define it uh, outside the main uh, globally. And I'm going to call it my touch screen um, handle, perhaps. And then, uh, and, the, and, the, and the return of this function will be stored into this uh, variable. And then I can see, uh, I can read the, uh, I can check whether the LCD screen is pressed, and I can read the X and Y coordinate of the touch screen. So I'm going to implement a very simple program to read this and print um, and draw on the LCD screen. So first thing I'll do is that I'll check if the LCD is pressed then and I'm going I'm to implement a certain routine. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to draw a point or a circle, a very little circle on the X and Y coordinate of the touch. Uh, and then I'll check if a certain rectangle being uh, pressed, if a certain rectangle, if the touch being into a rectangle, I need to uh, display as well. Um, so if you touch into the rectangle, it will erase the display and we'll fill it again with navy and redraw that rectangle again. And then you can do the touch. Let me show you how it looks. So let me compile it, load it to the board, and we're going to have a look at the OCD and show exactly what this uh, demo program does. Okay, um, so and this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. I've just shown you how to use an SPI OCD uh, and some basic implementation of resistive touchscreen controller. Uh, but you don't want to use this for commercial application. This is for educational purposes. And if you want to go further with the development of the touchscreen uh, controller, uh, feel free to do this. You can open the library C file and add some uh, post processing for the uh, touch uh, so that you can have smoother touch uh, response um, and so on. Uh, but yeah, that's all I want to show you today. Thank you so much for watching. And um, if you found it helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.